Hello children, now we are going to start with this lesson, lesson number 2, the address written by Marga Minko. So my dear children, we will be starting with the appropriateness of the, the title and then in a very systematic manner, we will go to the explanation of this lesson. So, my dear children, this uh, lesson is the address written by Marga, Marga Minku. Marga. So, we will go to the biography of the author also. And before that, let us proceed to the address, the appropriateness of the, the title. So, this uh, title is uh, very much appropriate. Why? Because uh, this started with, this lesson started with uh, the address. This lesson in the middle part also, in the climax also, we can see it is on the basis of the address that the whole story or the plot of the story was revolving. And at the end also, the writer wanted to, the narrator wanted to forget the address. Therefore, as the whole lesson centers around the sole concept or the only one concept, the address, the lesson or the title of the lesson, the the address is very much appropriate. Therefore, let us uh, go to the go to the next one that is the, the biography of the, the author. Here we move. Let us continue. So, this lesson is written by a Dutch journalist and writer. When she was uh, born, she was uh, born on 31st March 1920 and now she is more than 100 years and she was uh, born in Netherlands. And she had the pen name of Marga Minku. She had the pen name of Marga Minku. And in this lesson, she talks about her own family, the prosecution, the harassment, the losing of the human value. All these are in a very poignant manner, very, very painful manner is presented in this lesson. Therefore, my dear children, now let us before starting, it is a very imperative and interesting to know the background of the lesson. If we understand the background of the lesson, then our understanding of the lesson will be complete. Therefore, we go to the background of this lesson. Here we go. Let us proceed. Let us proceed. The story has been set on the aftermath of the destructive Second World War. By the end of the war in 1945, some 60 lakh Jews who were staying in Germany and other territories occupied by German Nazi forces had been killed systematically by the, the German Nazi forces led by Adolf Hitler. Something now which is known as Holocaust. Very painful, my dear children. The background the music of this lesson is very much, very much uh, painful. It uh, talks about the, the World War II. World War II, we started in 1939 and lasted up to 1945, where there were two forces. One is called the Allied Forces, Allied Forces, and another one was called the Axis Forces. So, in the, the Allied Forces, uh, who were there? There were the USA, there was the UK, there was Russia, and there was uh, France too. So, these are the major countries uh, who joined the Allied forces in the, the Axis forces. There was the German, there was the Japan, there was the China, and some of the, the territories of the, the South Asia and some part of the, the Europe too joined the Axis forces. And therefore, the fight was between the Allied and Axis forces, and it was the Allied forces who came out victorious in the, the war. And after that, due to the, the, due to the help of the, the Allied forces, some of the, the people were rescued from the, the concentration camp. Now, so you might have heard of Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler hated the Jews, particularly the Jew, Jews uh, very much. And what uh, he, he planned, he planned to systematically kill those people just by forcing the, the law or just by shooting in an illegal manner too. So sometimes uh, they were put in the uh, put in the uh, put in the ghettos. Sometimes uh, they were put in the gas chamber in the concentration camp, and this uh, concept is uh, called the total holocaust. 
So Hitler and the other like-minded German had to consider that the Jew along with some other races of people as the people of inferior racial quality and as enemies and threat, enemies and threat to the, the German society and rob them of the, the human human rights. So mainly speaking, the German forces and some other like-minded people who were there, they had the, the opinion to that. This Jew, Jews are where the threat to threat to the, the other people like the, the German German and the, the like-minded people. They are of inferior race and they are the enemy of the, the people. And therefore, they 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 are right. They are right. Human right. Their human right was also was also forfeited. They were killed like animals in a brutal manner. They first put, put them into the concentration con, uh, continent known as the ghettos and then to the concentration camp, which were built in many places in Germany and other occupied territories and killed them in millions. So, in these uh, two places, ghettos and the concentration camp, they were put in a systematic manner, in a deliberate manner, just to kill them when the, the war ended in 1945. Some of the, the Jews got liberated from the concentration camp by the Allied forces. So after, after the war was over, Adolf Hitler also in the month of April 1945, he also died and with the help of the Allied forces, as we have discussed now. So some of the, the some of the, the Jews were liberated from the, the concentration camp. Now let us see my dear children introduction to the, the lesson. Here we move, let us go. The introduction to the, the lesson, the address, the address. So in the lesson, uh, my dear children, we, we see a narrator. Who is the narrator? Narrator is the writer. That means this is the first person narrative. So narrator, we see this narrator is the daughter of Mrs. S. Mrs. S. And uh, this character, is uh, not so dominant, but in the background, her activities uh, are reflected very frequently. Therefore, let us uh, continue. It is a story of a girl whose mother, Mrs. S, gave their belonging to a lady called Mrs. Darling during the World War II. So, this line is quite important. This is called the crux of the matter. C R U X, crux of the matter. So, what is the crux of the matter? What is the central idea? The key sentence? The key sentence is that we find that. So, it is based on, on some antics. It is based on A N T I C S antics. Means some of the, the thing, precious thing of the, the past. Some of the precious thing of the, the past and some of the, the things that were used by the cutlery and the, the other that were used by the, by the, the family of or the narrator that is that is that is Marga Minko. So the narrator came, narrator came and her belongings, her belonging was given by the mother Mrs. S to Mrs. Darling during the World War, thinking that the things will be safe in her custody. Unfortunately, during the war, Mrs. S dies, but her daughter survives. So the war is over. It is 1945. After 1945, after the month of April, things were coming to normalcy in a very limping manner. And at the time, she had the strong urge. She has a strong desire. Strong desire for what? Strong desire to do. go back to that particular address just in order to, in order to revive, in order to recollect, in order to have the nostalgia of the past. Means that she wanted to touch, feel, see the things that were associated with the mother. Therefore, she, she, she went to the, went to the address. Her daughter first, for the things to link to the belonging, belonging of her mother, as she thought it will make her, make her remember the good old times, as she will then regret it. So initially speaking, so in the beginning. The daughter of S, that is the narrator, so she felt that the things will be things will be kept 
kept where it is now means it is a with the in the custody of mrs s and it is better to keep the things are with her only because because this will give the, the, the good memory the memory of the, the good good old days and that will be very much bitter because because she will have to regret for those time which were very good times for the family and therefore initially she wanted to leave the, the idea of going to the address but later on she become curious to see her mother's belonging belong but uh, finally what happened there was a strong desire in her mind to see the, the belonging of the, the mother and for this uh, purpose she made the motive of going to the, the address just to see just to think the, uh, the think of just to feel feel of the things of the past but uh, then mrs darling act like as she did not uh, know her and about uh, the mrs uh, daughter mrs as his daughter and uh, the girl tries to get her belonging back uh, when she finds them the object evoke memories of the, the old life but what happened my dear children man proposes god disposes what do you think just the opposite turns out when when she visited uh, the house visited the, the address initially after after being behaved in a very cold manner by the, the by the by the lady that is mrs dolling so she had the initial feeling or the impression that maybe she had rung the wrong bell maybe the address was wrong but she once again in order to in order to confirm her eyes she look at the address oh this is uh, the address and this is 46 marconi street no i am not incorrect means i am correct so it is uh, mrs dolling 46 marconi street that means i am i am correct the the lady the lady is showing inhuman treatment to me she decided to leave them all behind and resolved to move move forward so finally it was a resolved it was a decided she made up her mind that she will be leaving the, the things back and never look back never look back to the, the past because it will give her regret remorse repentance and all sort of all sort of bad memories and therefore she wanted to forget the address now my dear children it is the time for knowing about the, the theme of the, the lesson here we go let us continue let us continue the theme of the lesson the theme means my dear children the theme actually refers to the central idea theme means the central idea the gist g i s t gist so what is the central idea central idea here is the loss of human value loss of human value so what is it that caused that loss of human value it is the war certainly it is the war so war has very bad impact on the human being and they forget their relation they forget their emotion feeling sympathy and all human good qualities and this lesson talks about what talks about the negative impact that the war can cause on human being therefore let us see the story is a touching account of a girl who goes in search of her mother's belonging after the second world war in poland but even after finding what she so much wanted to touch to see to feel remember she lives everything behind as it could not bring her dead mother back so she went there she found the thing but she wanted to forget the address she did not like to do get the, the thing back because because this will this will be pay, very painful this will give remorse and repentance into the mind of the narrator therefore she decided that she will forget the address and leave the, the things behind she decided to move on and leave with only memories of the, the former times and the address that held so much important till she visited that place 
lost his value and girl realized that it could get her nothing but pain. So my dear children this address. So in the, the beginning what was uh, the feeling, the initial feeling was that lot of memories of the, the past was associated with it and it was very much pressured, it was very much cherished time for the, for the narrator to, to visit the address means this was very much precious, the address was very much precious. But after that towards the end uh, what happened she wanted to forget the address because uh, along with uh, these or associated with this address there are lot of bad memories and, and the repentance all the negative feelings therefore she decided to forget the address then let us continue so we will go to the detailed summary of the, the lesson so here we move let us continue so after learning the summary and when you go through the, the lesson then you can understand the, the lesson in a very beautiful manner so first let me read out the, the lesson the part of the, the lesson the beginning or the, the starting of the, the lesson uh, so here I start do you still know me I asked the woman looked at uh, me searchingly she had opened the, the door a chink I came closer and stood on the, the stick do you still know me do you st still know me let us see this uh, line. Do you still know me? Still know me. Who is the speaker here? The speaker is the narrator. Marga Minko is the narrator. She is the, the speaker. She is uh, talking to whom? She is uh, talking to Mrs. Mrs. Dolly. And what is the, the answer? What is the answer? The woman looked at me searchingly. She opened the door a chink. I I came closer and stood on the, the stage. No, I don't know you. So how horrible this uh, particular answer is. So the women, women uh, lost uh, the human value, and she also, she also said that she did not know. She, she told uh, that she at all did not uh, know her. Then the narrator said, I am Mrs. S's daughter. She gave the address. Then, then also, what happened? She, Mrs. Dorling, prevented the, the door so that she cannot enter and other people in the, the, in the, the house may not be disturbed. So, this is the very painful starting of this lesson. Therefore, finally, this uh, in the, the first uh, meet, the the lady lady told her that it is not convenient now it is not a convenient for me now to do to see see you or to talk to you therefore another time visit another time then i may give you time tell let us see that the first part we continue here mrs darling's indifferent attitude towards the narrator the narrator knocked at the, the door of a house, but the, the door was opened only a little or chink. Only a chink or little. She asked the owner if uh, she knew her. The narrator told her that she was Mrs. S's daughter. But the owner of the, the house, Mrs. Dorling, denied, denied knowing her. Mrs. Dorling's face gave absolutely no sign of recognition. She kept staring at her without speaking any word so dear children you see this word stare staring means continuously looking continuously looking at something as if uh, as if it is a stranger you do not know anything as if uh, as if uh, as if you want to do if he, as if you want to know more things uh, more things or you are totally ignorant about the about the person about the onlooker about the stranger the narrator thought that the that perhaps she was mistaken and had rung the wrong bell then the narrator got a glimpse of her mother's green knitted cardigan which mrs dorling mrs dorling was wearing so at the time 
another instance, another example, another example was said there. This example confirmed, confirmed the narrator that, oh, no, this is the right bell of rung. This is the right address. So, what is that particular proof or the evidence? The proof or the evidence is that the lady, that is Mrs. Dowling, was wearing the particular dress that is called the cardigan. cardigan. This is a woolen, woolen dress and that was uh, having big button and this uh, button got actually worsted because of constant uh, use and wash and this actually belonged to the mother of the narrator. So after seeing this uh, proof of the instance, so she was very much confirmed that oh this is the real address I was supposed to visit, I am not in the, the wrong, wrong then. This confirmed to her that she she had she had reached the correct address. But Mrs. Dowling excused herself by saying that she could not talk to the girl that day, and she she should come again later. Then she seamlessly closed the door. So so you know in whom you see that the lady finally even when the proof was given then. The lady said that it is not convenient, I cannot see you now. So saying, she closed the door behind, she locked the door behind in a very shameless manner. Then now let us see what follows. Here you go. Someone was watching the narrator from the window. The narrator stood for some time on the space even after the door closed. Someone was watching her from the bay window. The girl presumed that someone other than Mrs. Dowling must be watching her and must have asked why the narrator came there. Therefore, inside, inside the house, of Mrs. Dowling, some other person was there when the door was closed. Maybe, maybe the, the lady was lady was uh, sitting, sitting, sitting in the, the sitting in the, the bay window, sitting on the bay window. Bay window is a bigger window where there is a provision for provision for sitting, and somebody was uh, sitting there. And maybe somebody asked the question, "Who is that girl?" And then no answer was given by Mrs. So, Mrs. Darling simply said what? Nothing. It is nothing. Then let us see the next part. The narrator remember, remember what, what her mother had told her. After this refusal, the narrator walked back to the station thinking about, the, about her mother. Her mother had given her Mrs. Darling's address years ago. It had been in the first half of the, the war. The narrator's mother told her about Mrs. Dorling and old acquaintance. So now, the narrator was going back. She will be now going back to her rented house and she will be reaching there by train. So, while she was going back, then she recollected. What she recollected? She recollected the, the speech of the mother. What did the mother told? The mother told that she was Mr. Dorling was one of the, the acquaintance or one of the friend, one of the familiar person, familiar person, and who took the, the who took the, the custody, custody of the, the things because of the things will be better in her possession or in her custody. Therefore, that was the promise given by the, the lady that as the, the war was going on, things will be safe in her custody. So this was the kind of the recollection that that was that was coming or frequenting into the mind of the narrator. She also informed her that every time when Mrs. Dowling came, she took something home with her. The reason Mrs. Dowling gave her action was that she wanted to see for the good thing as the narrator's mother. Would, uh, would not be able to save anything if uh, they had to leave the leap suddenly. So this is called the exploitation of the, the situation. How this situation was explo exploited, exploited 
means that somebody will be in travel and you are you are taking advantage over the, the particular person or the situation so what was uh, going on what was uh, going on against the, the jew the narrator was the, the, the jew and they what they wanted this uh, this uh, lady this lady christian lady came and told that the things will be safe in my custody because uh, you may be you may leave at any moment and then the, the things will be in danger therefore the things will be very safe in my custody therefore it is better to keep them with me this is the kind of the memory that was flashing back to the mind of the, the narrator darling darling that she was uh, carrying such a heavy luggage every time she visited as it was as it was really risky during the war during the, the war the things that was carried in this uh, manner with the heavy luggage a heavy luggage was very risky during the time of the war but but uh, some sort of promise or place was given by the, the lady to keep uh, the things in the custody then let us continue here we go the narrator remembers uh, when she met mrs dorling the narrator arrived at the station without having paid much attention to the things on the way she was she was walking into the family place again for the first and see the world this also very frequent questions that come in the exam very very uh, very simple question even though wants some or invites some critical faculty so the simple question is that why why she did not at all look at her surrounding while she was going back going back to her rented house she was not looking back or looking looking back or looking to and fro looking not looking this side or that side of the road because of the things the particular scenery was very familiar and she did not want to disturb or pester her mind P S T R P S T R means disturb. D I S T U R B disturb. She did not like to disturb her mind with this particular, particular familiar places and familiar, familiar remembrance. Therefore, she did not look at those things. Is it clear? Then let us proceed. She did not want to upset herself. Is the answer? She did not want to upset herself. She want, did not want to disappoint herself. disappoint herself with the sign and the street house is full of memories from the previous time in the train she remember the first time when she had be, had seen mrs dorling it was it was the morning after the, the day her mother had told her about mrs dorling who was wearing a brown coat and a shapeless hair the narrator had asked from her mother's if her she lived far away as she was carrying a heavy case her mother told her that mrs dolling lived at number 46 marcory street so this was a cursory kind of it was a, a kind of casual kind of reference that was given by the mother of the narrator the mother of narrator that is mrs s so mrs s was telling telling that she lived nearby she lived in number 46 marcory street and this was the answer to the question that was asked by asked by the, the narrator as to where she lived so the answer was she lived in number 46 marcory street which was the neighboring area then let's continue here we go Initially the narrator was reluctant to see the the family so old belongs So in the introduction also we have discussed about the unwillingness or reluctance of the narrator to see the the things of the past because it is very much a pain for the narrator has remembered that address but but uh, wa- but uh, waited a long time to go there initially after the, the war was over she was not interested in all the belongings lying with mrs dorling 
she was afraid to see the, the things that had belongs to her dead mother. She did not want to see their belongings lying in Mrs. Dolan's house in boxes and cupboards and needing to be put back in their old places again. She was scared that the things might make her very nostalgic. But gradually her life would become normal again and one day she became curious to do know about all this separation. So initially, what are the feeling? The feeling was that she will be becoming very much nostalgic after seeing all these things, all these things in different places, into the boxes and cupboards. But uh, finally, finally, when the, the things came to normalcy, then she has a strong desire or the, the curiosity to see the, the things or the positions of the, the mother. Then let us see how the narrator decided to visit again. After her first visit, I did not yield any results. She decided to visit a second time. This time, a girl about 15 opened the door. As, as her mother was not at home, the, the narrator asked about Mrs. Darling. She was, oh, she was told that Mrs. Darling was not at home. So, this is the second instance she visited. And at that time, Mrs. Dorling was not at home. And the, the daughter of Mrs. Dorling is 15 years old girl, opened the, the door. And she was really courteous. And she invited, invited the narrator to the, the room and offered the cup of the, the tree. And then she got the opportunity of seeing, viewing, and also retrospecting all the, the things of the past. Let us see. She followed the, followed the girl along the, the passage. She noticed that the old fashioned iron candle, ca candle holder which they never used. They went into the, the living room. The narrator was so horrified. She found herself in the, the midst of all their old belongings. But they, but they oppressed her. They were kept in strange surrounding and in a very tasteless manner. When they went to the, the living room, then the, the things were seen in a very tasteless manner. They were decorated or simply they were kept in a careless manner and her mind pained a lot. After seeing the, the things uh, that were arranged in that particular surrounding in the tasteless manner, she was a hard to see her family's belonging lying in a tasteless way with the ugly furniture and the, the musty sm muggy smell. Maggie smell. Maggie smell means a very unpleasant weight type of smell. Okay, when the, the things are weight, when there is a humidity, humidity, then the, the things will be weight and a kind of a smell will come which is unpleasant. It is called the Maggie kind of smell. The tablecloth, the civil silver cutlery, and even the, the, the steel light showing that the apple on the, the tin plate belongs to her. So these are all the, the, the things that belong to, to the family of the, the narrator. Then uh, let us continue. Here we go. Let us continue. The narrator's keen on by observation of uh, Mrs. Dorling's daughter. So what is the key number observation of the, the daughter of a darling? Let us see. Here we go. Let us continue. She was keenly observing the, the girl who had brought a back family to the, the family to that of Mrs. Dorling. So, Mrs. Darling was also a lady with the, the brought back and similar was the, the daughter, daughter of Mrs. Darling and she was observing, the narrator was observing very, very minutely or very closely, very closely to that, to that particular girl of 15. The girl was uh, placing tikka for, for tea to be, to be served. She was uh, pouring the tea from a white teapot which uh, had a gold border on the, the on the lid and then she took out the same spoon from the box. 
So, my dear children, you see that the teacups, teapot, the spoons, all these things belong to the narrator. And this is so painful for the narrator because of the things were in the strange, unknown, unknown surrounding in a very tasteless manner. All this uh, crockery under the cutlery belonged to, to the, the narrator's family, but uh, perhaps the girl was not aware of uh, this fact. She cracked and joked about uh, the eating dinner in this, in this antique plate. Antique means old, old fashioned. Old fashioned. Old fashioned. The narrator also found it a burn mark under the tablecloth, and the narrator indirectly hinted to the, the girl. That they miss the things which were either missing from their original place or have been loaned to somebody. The narrator finally hinted, hinted to the girl of the 15, that they missed, missed those things which may be either missing, missing from their original place, means from their house, or they may have a loan to, or they may have given it to the custody of somebody. Then let us see the next part. The narrator remembers about polishing the silver outlay. Let us see. The narrator remembers the, the, the time when her mother was alive and the narrator was at home either bored or ill. A particular occasion was there when the, the narrator was either bored or very much feeling very much dull or listless. Very dull or listless, feeling very boring or maybe feeling feeling ill, okay, suffering from some, some sort of illness, some sort of disease or malady. Her mother asked her to, to polish the, the silver cutlery. She was surprised to hear that the cutlery that they were using was made of silver and even Mrs. Dwarling's daughter was surprised to hear that they were using silver cutlery for everyday eating. So this uh, silver cutlery that was uh, used for everyday everyday use by the, the family by the family of poor darling usually belonged to to belonged to, to the mother or to the narrator that memory that memory is that memory really haunts the mind because she remembered those occasion that particular occasion when she was ill or very dull when she was asked. She was asked to wash the silver cutlery, polish the work silver cutlery. The narrator's final resolution, therefore, finally, after the second visit, so the narrator resolved something. She came to the conclusion, she decided or made up her mind. So, what are the what are those thinking or what are those resolution? Let us see the resolution. The narrator decided that she could not stay there anymore. The address was correct, but the narrator did not want to remember it anymore. So, she made all sort of investigation and finally she proved that the address was really correct and the address, even though it was correct, she did, did not want to remember or she wanted to forget the address. She felt that the object were linked to the memory of the time which no longer existed. So, this is the answer to why she wanted to forget the address. She wanted to forget the address because this memory, this, uh, this, this uh, particular things uh, were linked or hyperlinked to the, the memory of the past time which is no more because neither the mother nor the brother nor the sister nor any other member of the families, they are all of them, all of them died in the world. They had lost their value in the, the, in the strange surrounding. So, in the, the strange surrounding, the, the house of Mrs. Dowling, they lost their significance or importance and therefore she decided to forget that address. She confronted herself by thinking that her present house was too small to accommodate all the, the old stuff. She left the house leaving all her family's belongings behind. And more particularly, the third reason for forgetting the, the address thinking that the present rented house where she was living was very 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 small and it in, it cannot accommodate or it cannot cannot facilitate 
or it cannot house all the, the things of the, the past, all the antiques of the, the past. Therefore, she left all the, the things behind and then proceeded further and never looked back. She wanted to forget the address. Now, let us uh, see the, the main highlight of the, the lesson. Then our understanding of the, the lesson will be perfect and clear. Here you go. Let us continue. The main points. Once again, let us uh, make the review of the, the lesson just by just by highlighting just by highlighting the, the main points. Once again, here you go. The narrator decided to visit the address. Visit the address. That was uh, given to her by her mother, where all her family's precious possessions were kept separately by Mrs. Darling. The first time when the narrator visited the address, Mrs. Darling behaved in the, the most absurd, most absurd or most illogical, 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 strange, strange, strange manner. She refused to recognize the narrator and did not later enter the house so that the narrator returns empty handed. This is the first visit. Second one, the narrator is reminded of her mother. So, this is the recollection part. Who had given this address to her years ago when, the, when in spite of the word they were living in Holland and she was, she saw Mrs. Dorling who was introduced to her as an old acquaintance of her mother. This is also the memory of the, the past, the, the particular particular occasion in which in which uh, she was introduced uh, to Mrs. Dorling. When she came back from the, the university, one day she saw the things were taken and then the, the mother, the mother gave the introduction that she was one of the, the acquaintance of the of the mother, that is Mrs. S. The narrator noticed the many precious items missing from their place. Then Mrs. S told her that Mrs. Dowling was helping her by taking her tablecloth, silver cutlery, antique plates, large vases, and crockery to their house to keep in safe custody in case they had to leave the leave the house suddenly. The narrator decided to re revisit the house of Mrs. Dowling. As she felt the urge to see all her mother's belongings, she wanted to touch them, feel them, and remember them. So, in the first visit, she could not see, and therefore she wanted to make the second visit so that she can see the thing, feel them, and remember them. On her second visit to 46 Margaret Street, she could get entry into the house as Mrs. Dorling's 15 years old daughter opened the door. Her mother was not at the girl led her to the, the living room where, to the, the narrator's dismay or disappointment, dismay or disappointment, there the things that belonged to her mother were arranged in a very bad manner, in a very tasteless manner. Mrs. Darling's daughter incorrectly told the narrator that they were using all the, the antique plates, crockery and cutlery. The narrator uh, took an impulsive decision to leave everything behind as the precious object owned by the, by the mother had lost their value or the, the significance. Also, this object associated with her mother were now in a strange surrounding or association. The narrator decided to forget her past as it brought back a bitter memory, it's not better memory, but bitter memory. Her mother was no more. They are to revive the, the pleasant memories. Then uh, let us continue. Here we go. Then the narrator walked out of uh, Mrs. Dowling's house, decided that she would never come back to this house to see or take away her family's uh, position as she had no place to keep all of it. Uh, my dear children, now there are some vocabulary items which are important uh, for you to learn. These are the, the new vocabulary. One is a poignant. This is pronounced as poignant. This is not pronounced poignant. means arousing sadness, 
or a bitter memory. Evoke means arouse, resolve the sight, chink, narrow opening. Fleetingly means for a short time. Cardigan is a sweater with a button. Masti means stale, stale. Bay window means large window sticking out of the, the wall of a house. Jump money doorpost. Struck occurred. Apparently, evidently, acquaintance, familiar person or known person. Turned up money appeared. Antique, a collection of objects of the, the past. Lugging means carrying. Creak means strain. Reproving means with the deserve approval. Back on means call. Store staff means the things that are kept in the safe custody. Confronted means come face to face. Endued means survive. Ident means making short journey or going out, going out of the house where walking involves. Hanuka means it is uh, used in the, the Jewish festival of light. Hanuka just like Diva. Dipaboli or Diwali. Some other words are fancy means desired, pewter means a tin alloy, jingling means a light metallic sound, severed means cut off, shed means tiny or small pieces. So these are the questions, these are the these are the, the word meaning and um, my dear children let me show you some of the, the vocabulary part some of the, the vocabulary part after after that uh, let us uh, go after that let us uh, go to this let us uh, go to this uh, newspaper of, of the time and some of the, the cartoon stripes here you go let us continue war in holland you can see this is the picture of the, the war in holland this is the daily sketch newspaper so this is the picture of the, the war. Now two women are talking. Mrs. S, you should give all of your precious item to me as you might be asked to leave any time and you shall lose everything. Mrs. Darling talking to Mrs. S. Mrs. S. Darling, darling. Are you sure about uh, this uh, as you might get in trouble for helping a Jewish family? Uh, so in this uh, manner, uh, they are talking, they are talking, initial, initial talk. So after the, the war, this is the picture after the, the war, Mrs. S is uh, dead, but the, the daughter survives, the daughter survives. So this is the, the picture of the, the house. This is the picture of the, the house, house of Mrs. Darling. It is the particular address uh, in which, in which all the, the things or the antiques of the, the narrator state in a very tasteless manner. So this is Darling's house, house number 46, Marconi Street. So this color should be white color. This this is the, this will be white color and name should be in black. Now she is uh, going away, the narrator going away from the, the house. So in this uh, way that the lesson continues, some of the, the important question I am simply reading out uh, some of the, the questions. I was uh, not in a room I knew and I did not know why does the narrator say that uh, she was in a room which she knew and yet she did not know. Now my dear children this is uh, called the paradoxical type of statement. What type? Paradoxical statement. This is a paradoxical statement. P A R A Paradox. Paradox means in a particular sentence, suppose this is a sentence, there will be two parts, sentence one part, sentence part two. And one idea is opposing to the other, that is called paradoxical. If I tell, in my beginning is my end. So if I tell, in my beginning, in my beginning, is my end, is my end. This uh, sentence you see, 
these are two part are quite opposing and they are called the paradoxical type of sentence and here also the writer was uttering the narrator was uttering a paradoxical type of sentence and when we see on the, the surface it seems to be hum log ko aisa lagta hai ki ye sentence kuch galat hoga lekin when you are going deeper we understand that this statement is very much correct so what are the, the things that is familiar to the, the narrator the the particular antics the cutlery the tea cup tea spoons and all this uh, all this uh, hanuka and other other stand light stand all these are the things that belong to the mother therefore these are the known thing but the surrounding in which it is circle it is the, the house of mrs s therefore this is unknown therefore the known things are placed in the unknown place therefore the writer was telling i was in a room i knew and do not know the answer let us see that the second line the narrator went to mrs dorling's house she was taken inside the house by mrs dorling's daughter when the door of the living room was open to her she went inside and she was in immediately horrified by whatever she saw inside the room the room was full of all the belongings of which had been taken out by mrs dolling at the beginning of the war she felt that she knew the knew the room because it was full of all the belongings of the mother and as the room was not theirs but was a different room and the things were kept in a different manner she felt she did not know the room she did not know the room she knew the things therefore she was a very right in telling i was in a room i knew and did not know am i correct my dear children so this is the end of the, the lesson i suppose you understood 100% and it is a better that it is uh, quite better that you read the work, read the lesson and write the glossary or the vocabulary part write the, the word meaning for better understanding and make the, the new words your own because words are wisdom with this let me conclude we will meet you in the, the next video till then bye bye have a very good day